Today's first impression is going to be slightly different because I'm going to be answering your questions directly. I shared with you guys over on Instagram and on my community page that I am going to be doing a first impressions on this little beauty right here. And I asked you guys what specific questions that you have that you were interested in. Before I jump into your guys' actual questions, we are gonna take a dive into what fits inside of this bag. I'm gonna share with you first how I pack my items on a day-to-day -day basis inside of this bag, and then we'll do another configuration in case your everyday essentials are different than mine. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Melissa and I love luxury and handbags. Now, I don't necessarily love all of luxury because I don't dabble into luxury outside of handbags and SLGs and the occasional shoe. I actually only own one, but I do love handbags. Today's video is gonna be dedicated to my newest bag, which is my Mulberry Mini Alexa. When I was in the market for this bag, when I was considering it, I had a really hard time finding videos on this bag. And a lot of the videos that I found didn't answer my questions and they weren't necessarily the best of quality, but I did come across one or two channels that I thought were really insightful. The first one is Always Sophie. She has several videos on this bag specifically. She has a smaller channel, so I hope that you guys will go and check her out because I do feel like her content deserves to be viewed quite a bit more than it is. And then Petite Ellie also has a video or two on this bag as well. So I do want to go into this bag and share with you guys all of the nitty and gritty because it's hard to find any real details on this bag. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is take a quick little overview of the bag. As you can see here, it does have a braided handle. Now this is a soft handle. It's not firm, so it is malleable. It does have these little tabs here. They are adjustable, but I don't see why you would adjust them. One of you guys actually told me that maybe it's because if you fill it up too full, this might need to be a little bit longer. I could definitely see that being the case. It has the postman lock here with the little tree up there and the mulberry there. On the side, you can see that it is cinched in on the side. You can open that up and expand it and the bag will take on a different shape and it also will allow you to hold more inside of this bag. As far as the back goes, it's plain and simple. I wish that it would have had a back pocket, but it does not. And the bottom does not have any feet on here. The strap is an adjustable strap. It has these little claw clips here. It does say Mulberry on the hardware, and it also has a little adjustment tab here. You can see it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different adjustments. I will touch on that a little bit later because one of my questions is is, is this bag petite girl friendly? I am five foot six for reference and I'm about a size eight ten. So here is the removable adjustable strap. Now the strap does attach inside of the bag. So you have to open this tab, open this tab, turn your turn lock and open it up. That is where the strap does attach. So now that we have the bag open, let's go ahead and take a look at what I keep inside of this bag. As you guys can see, I keep it pretty stacked full, but I love how everything lays out perfectly the way that I have this bag packed up. Hopefully you guys are getting a clear view of what that looks like. This is packed to the max. So let me share with you guys what I have in here. The first item that I have is my iPhone 13 Pro Max. And I do wanna share how I'm gonna pull these out. So I'm gonna pull them out in a row. So everything in the front is gonna be pulled out first and I'm just gonna work my way back. That way you guys know exactly how I have these items in here. So iPhone 13 Pro Max, I am filming on my phone so I did put the case in here, but I made sure to put the inside of the case facing towards the bag so it does take up the actual amount of space inside of the bag to share with you guys if I take out my cell phone you can see it does have a little bit more room now but it's not anything crazy the next thing I have is my Kindle this is I believe a seven inch Kindle it's just a standard size Kindle one of the questions that I have is does a, a air AirPad, Air, what are they called? I will let you guys know in the actual question that I have typed out. Does it fit inside of here? 
Unfortunately, I don't have one, but I have a good feeling they're about the similar size of the Kindle and I do carry my Kindle inside of here if I'm going to work. If I'm not going to work, I won't carry a Kindle. And now that is what it looks like without the Kindle inside of there. The next item that I'm gonna have is my wallet. This is a medium size wallet. It's a compact wallet. This is the Louis Vuitton Victorine wallet. I do have it full. It has all of my items inside of there. It's got cash inside of there. It's got items inside of the coin pouch. So it is a nice full wallet and it fits in there extremely comfortably with no issues whatsoever. Then if you take a look, you can see now there's lots and lots of space inside of there. The next item I have is my sunglasses. My sunglasses are standing up vertically inside of here to take up less space and it does fit perfectly in there as you can see. So you can do that with your sunglasses. Now I carry mine in a soft case in all of my smaller bags. And then the next item I'm going to have is my mini pochette. So inside of this bag, I have been carrying my little Hermes one from Naomi Crafted, but this one is longer than the Louis Vuitton one. Let's see if you guys can see that. So because this one's longer, it doesn't fit in there quite as well. So I've been using my mini pochette instead. It's actually a little bit on the empty side compared to normal, but if I have more items inside of here, it does fit as well. So inside of here, I'm going to have my Advil bottle some eyeglass cleaning wipes, some lip oils, some perfume, hand cream, band-aid, lady products, chapstick, and that is about all that I have inside of here right now. And as you guys saw, that fit inside of the bag perfectly. Now, the last two items I have inside of here are going to be my key pouch from Louis Vuitton and also my headphones and I have my AirPod headphones that I have inside of a Zoomoni case. So I do have a Zoomoni organizer inside of this bag, but I have the, I believe it's a 1.2 cent, I don't know, I don't remember the thickness. I will pop it up on the screen for you guys. It's the very, very thin one, so it's not taking up any extra space inside of the bag, but I do wanna share with you guys what the inside of the bag looks like without this organizer. As you can see, it's very, very thin. So the inside of the Mulberry bag is a suede interior. Now that's not an additional lining. It is the back of the leather that you can see there. And then it does have a, a slab of leather in the very bottom. And then the pocket is leather as well. So that is everything that I carry in my bag on a regular basis. If I'm wearing it for the weekend, I will not put my Kindle inside of there. So I do wanna share with you guys what it would look like if I used different items. So the first item I wanna share is does a hard sunglass case fit inside of here? And it does, it fits in there perfectly if you do it horizontally. And then if you do it vertically, it will not fit vertically. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that inside of there. Now, if you wanna carry a card holder instead of a wallet, of course that will fit in there with ease. I have a pack of mints here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put another wallet in there because a lot of people do carry two wallets. Of course, everybody's gonna have keys, so I'm gonna put my keys back inside of there. And then my sunglasses, I don't need to put in there because I already put a hard case in there. And then lastly is the cell phone. So let me share with you guys what those items look like inside of here, if you do carry items similar to these. As you can see, it fits in there perfectly fine. There's even more room. I could definitely put my mini pochette in there as well. I would just have to rearrange some things. So let me rearrange and I'll share with you guys. Okay, I went ahead and rearranged some things. As you can see, that's pretty much max capacity. You're not gonna be able to fit much more inside of there, but you can switch things around and you definitely can fit quite a bit inside of this bag. If you are worried about capacity, I would say not to. It's going to hold your daily essentials. I would be willing to bet on it. Now that I have the bag empty, I do wanna give you guys a quick little overview of how slouchy this bag is if you don't have the organizer inside of there. So as you can see, this bag is very soft and supple. And I do wanna share that I'm gonna be answering all of these questions 
from the perspective of the organizer being inside of here because I've never used this bag without an organizer in here because I have heard about the complications that can happen if you don't have an organizer in here. I am gonna share that with you. So one of the things is that it's very difficult to buckle and unbuckle if you don't have an organizer or enough stuff in here. So as you can see, once I go to close it, it kind of closes in on itself and you have to kind of push really hard to get the turn lock through and I'm still struggling to get the turn lock through. With the organizer being inside of there, you're not gonna have that issue, especially if you carry it full, like how I carry it. I went ahead and filled it back up with most of my everyday essentials. I didn't put my cell phone case or my Kindle inside of here, but everything else is back inside of here. So that is a little bit more of a true representation of what this bag is lo looks like or feels like when I use it. I did go ahead and type out your questions. If there was a question asked multiple times, I did not word it verbatim. So I just kind of wrote down the question and combined it into one. I'm not gonna share who asked each question. I'm just gonna share the question in general and answer them for you guys. This first question is a prime example of a question that I combined it from two different people. The question is, how does the handle feel? How does it compare to other top handles? So let me share with you guys what the handle looks like. It's a very small braided handle, but it is soft. It is malleable, as I explained earlier. This was a concern of mine. So I was really happy that you guys asked me this question because I would have forgot to answer it. So I'm really happy that you guys asked it. I'm glad that I asked you guys to leave your questions down below. That way I can better suit your guys' questions. So how does it feel? You guys, it is the perfect size for my hand. As you can see here, let me do it again. My fingers can grab onto it perfectly. Maybe it'll show better if I do it. No, I can't. I can't turn my hand the other way. I can turn the bag the other way, but not my hand. You, When I grab it, it fits perfectly on the handle. It doesn't scrape on the bag. It doesn't make me feel like my fingers are squished whatsoever. Hopefully that will give you guys a better view. It fits very, very comfortably in my hand. Now, if you have larger hands, I'd say I have average size hands. My ring finger is a size five and three quarters. My middle finger is almost a size seven. My This chunky finger is a size seven. So that's kind of the size of my hand. I'd say just average size hands and it fits very, very comfortably inside of here. Now, as far as how does the top handle compare to other top handles, you can see it's very, very small, but it's comfortable. I felt like with my pochette Matisse, because it was so flat, it wasn't a comfortable top handle. Now, this top handle is even easier to use because it is so big, but I would say that this one actually feels a little bit more comfortable to me, and I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe because it is soft, malleable leather, whereas this one's a little bit more stiff and hard but this one you can put your arm right in and carry it on the crook of your arm whereas this one I'm obviously not going to be able to do that the next question is how has wear been now I actually purchased this bag back in January believe it or not I didn't use it or share it until almost the end of February and that's because I wanted it to be a true unboxing, but because this is a seasonal color to my understanding, I bought it in January. I was afraid with their new seasonal colors, with the sale that happened in January, that this was gonna be one of the ones that they took off of their website. And you guys, after I purchased this bag, they did take it off of their website and then they brought it back. So everybody who wants this color, I highly recommend getting it now while you can, because again, to my understanding, this is a seasonal color and it's not gonna be around year round. Um, but I really love the color. It was the perfect shade for me. So I went ahead and bought it in January, even though I didn't use it till mid February. So with that being said, I think I've used this bag a grand total of 11 times since mid February. That's quite a bit. It's the end of March currently. It's almost April. We're right at the tail end of March and I feel like I've used it quite a bit. I will say there hasn't been any wear and tear, but the one thing that I have noticed is that because this is a matte leather, because it's a light cool tone pink, it shows dirt and residue very, very easily. 
So what I've been doing to help prevent that is one, I did a quick little wipe down and got it all clean and I sprayed it with Carbon Pro. When you spray your bag with Carbon Pro, it does help in my experience to get dirt debris off afterwards because it almost gives a protective layer between the debris and the bag. So that's what I did and then every session I use it, so if I'm using it for two or three days, I will use it for the two or three days in a row and then I will go ahead and give it a wipe down before I put it back on the shelf. And now for the million dollar question, is the bag hard to get in and out of? As you guys can tell, it's a little finicky. You have the two magnets. I did leave my stickers on my magnets to help with that and then you have this turn lock that you have to open it up. I will say, however, I am the type of person that does not put myself in a situation where I have to be in such a hurry to get into my bag where that would be annoying. So if, it, if I'm answering just for myself, is it annoying to get in and out of? Absolutely not. I'm that person that is in the grocery line with my card, outside of my wallet, inside of my hand already. I do not wait till I get to a cash register to get inside of my purse to pull my wallet out and then pull my card out. If you are that type of person where you wait until you are checking out to pull out your card and your wallet and everything else, I could see how this could be a downfall for you. If you are the type of person like me who is standing in line doing nothing already, so you might as well pull out your wallet and your card while you're standing in line to be respectful of the people behind you. If you are that type of person that constantly thinks about things, you're an overthinker and an overachiever in some aspects of life, then I would say that this is not gonna be difficult for you. You would just open it up very, very easily. You twist it, you pop it open. It's no problem whatsoever. It's very easy to get your items inside of your bag. Bag. I only see it being a problem for somebody who waits for the very last minute to get their items outside of their bag and then they feel like they are being brushed by others. Then I can see where it might be a little bit of an issue for you. Question number four is a very easy one. Price. What was the price? What did I pay for this bag? I paid $1,200. I wasn't aware, and I don't know if you guys are aware, but Mulberry doesn't have tax. So if you order from the Mulberry website, they won't charge you tax and they won't charge you shipping. Why is that? I have no clue, but I did not get charged tax. So I paid total $1,250 for this bag. And I'm going to throw in a bonus. Do I think that this bag is worth that price point? I really, really, really do. And then I do wanna jump on that one more time. You can often buy Mulberry bags, including the mini Alexa included in their sales and their outlet stores. I don't have an outlet store near me, so that's not something I'll ever be able to go check out. But if you wait until their sales, then you definitely can get them for much less. They do sales, I believe, you guys, Mulberry lovers, let us know down in the comments below. I know that they do one in January because that's when I bought mine and I saw that there was lots of bags on sale, which actually led me to buy my bag, but I didn't love any of the colors that were on sale. I will say that the colors that I saw that were on sale were in the seven and $800 range, so almost 50% off. I think that is a great price point and um, you can definitely get them on sale. I just... This was the color I loved and I was willing to pay full price for it. Do I think it'll have durability issues? I do. I think that you need to get an organizer because it is a slouchy material. It will lose its shape over time if you don't get an organizer. I also think if you're not taking care of the handle, it could cause issues. Like if you were to hang it up, it's going to have a pointy handle. If you were to smush it down, it's definitely going to smush down. So I think you need to take care in that. I also think that the matte leather is going to cause issues if you have a light color like this one. I'm just being 100% brutal, 100% transparent with you guys. I knew that going into it, so I took precautions. I store mine just sitting on my shelf. I made sure to get an organizer for inside of here. I made sure to spray mine. I make sure, I usually carry this top handle, so it's not necessarily on my clothes very often. To avoid the color transfer, I would just go for a darker bag if that's something that you are concerned about. So I definitely think that there are some issues that could happen down the road but I can tell you issues that could happen with every single one of my bags. For example, 
this one right here behind me, which is one of my all time favorites, the canvas can yellow. So I keep it out of the sun and I keep it inside of a dust bag. It also can patina or will patina, not even can, it will patina. So I keep it in a dust bag and out of the sun. I am more careful and feel like I need to be more careful with this bag than I need to be with this bag. So hopefully that will put in perspective what I mean, because I don't think this is a bag that you're going to have to baby. I just think that it's a bag that if you want it for many, many years and you want to take care of it, there are a few steps that you could do to prolong the durability of this bag. This was another question I didn't expect to get quite as much as I did, and that is, is the bag heavy? No, it's not heavy whatsoever. It is full leather, but it's not lined, so it doesn't have two pieces of leather. It just has the one solid piece of leather. I don't find it to be heavy whatsoever. I will pop up the weight on the screen for you guys if my scale can read it. I don't know if my scale is going to be able to read it. Maybe I can use my food scale. If I'm able to get the weight, I will pop it up on the screen for you guys, but I don't find it to be heavy whatsoever. I was really surprised that so many people were concerned about the weight, considering how small it is. So let me know if you were one of the people that asked down below, or if you have any idea, have you guys heard that mulberry bags are really heavy? Is that why you're asking? Let me know down below why you were so curious about the weight. The next question is about the strap and the person asked how is it crossbody and I believe, I didn't write it down, but I believe this was my petite friend who said that she um, is petite, she's five foot two, so how is it crossbody? I am five foot six, I'm a size eight, ten for reference. My weight is fluctuating right now, so I'm not going to share with you guys how much I weigh, but on average, on a typical day before I started this health journey that I'm on with my gut and my digestive system. I was 165 pounds. So um, with that being said, I have it on the shortest one, you guys, and I will pop up some uh, mod shots for you guys to see where it fits. So I don't feel like this is petite friendly. I feel like it's going to hit you pretty long. I don't think it's going to be bad. I think it's definitely something that you can make work for you. I like mine a little bit higher up, and that's why it's on the shortest length. I could definitely go with the middle length and still be very, very comfortable with my height of 5'6". So is it petite friendly? I wouldn't say it's not petite friendly, but I would say it might hit you a little bit longer than you want it to. I definitely would say it's tall girl friendly because it is a longer strap. And like I said, I have it on the shortest strap, which is rare for me. I typically on most of my bags have them on the middle part of the strap. It's very comfortable crossbody. It's also comfortable on my shoulder and it's also comfortable top handle. So that is how it wears crossbody. I think it's comfortable it's lightweight it doesn't cause me any issues it doesn't bounce off my hip it doesn't have a weird shape to it it's nice and flat and flush with the body I think it's a great crossbody bag does the leather stain I think I already touched on that I absolutely think that this leather will stain anytime I've had any experience with matte leather it tends to get dirtier faster I also find that brighter colors get really really dirty pretty fast with this one, I have had some marking even with the metal right here already and I was able to just wipe it off. So I'm not too concerned about that. I think if you do your due, due diligence, due diligence, Dude, you guys know what I'm trying to say. If you keep an eye on your bag every time you use it or after a session of using it, as I say, then and wipe off any debris that you might see, I don't think it's going to be an issue. It'll take you 30 seconds to clean it off. That's what, that's what I did personally, but I do think that it can get dirty. Like right here, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it, but I could see a tiny blue hue right there on the bag probably from my jeans from carrying it on my shoulder when I was leaving work yesterday. So I do think that it is prone to get dirty in this particular color or any of the lighter colors. They have the beautiful cognac color that I think is stunning, but it doesn't work with my wardrobe. I almost bought it because I do love it that much. Um, and I think that would be the perfect shade of the Mulberry Mini Alexa to go for if you are going away or if you're trying to avoid any type of dirt, debris, or stains. Will an iPad Air fit? Um, I think so. I don't know. I don't own one. As I said, my Kindle fits. I think they're roughly about the same size. I'm not quite sure, but I think that it would fit in here. No problem. That would be my guess, but I don't know for sure. 
what are the dimensions of the bag? I'm just going to pull the dimensions off of the website. There's no point in me measuring it myself. And I will share with you guys the dimensions that I found on the website right here for you guys to see. For a comparison, let's compare it next to my Louis Vuitton Crocette. They are very similar in size. I'm hoping I have both of these in the screen right now. I have cut off before a bag when I was trying to compare it in the screen. So hopefully they are both in the screen. There you go. You can see them that way, this way. They're almost exactly the same. Let's check out the bottoms. And then there's the bottom. So very, very similar to in size to the Crocette. And let me compare it to my Alma BB. That's a very popular size. I'm pretty sure that you guys will be familiar with the Alma BB. Okay, here is the Alma BB right next to it. You can see again, they are similar in size. The Alma BB is a little bit taller. It definitely tapers more. Both of them taper at the top but the Alma BB tapers more. I will say that the mini Alexa holds more than the Alma BB because it is a soft leather. And then as far as the fronts, you can see there. So it is a good size. Again, I will have the dimensions up on the screen for you guys so you guys can see. I think it's a great practical small size bag. The last and final question was, how does the leather compare to Bottega Veneta or Loewe? I don't have Loewe bags. I have heard Bottega Veneta and Loewe have some of the best leather out there. In my opinion, I agree. I think that Bottega Veneta has the best leather in my entire collection. And it's almost to a point where you can't compare these two because this is not matte. This is matte. This is um, smooth leather that's woven together. This is pebbled leather. Please excuse my nails, guys. It is Easter weekend and I'm not able to get my nails done. So it's been several weeks and they look pretty raunchy. So if you guys have been staring, about, staring at them the whole time thinking, Melissa, what is going on? That is what is going on. So how does it compare? I don't feel like they are comparable. However, if Bottega Veneta came out with a bag in this leather that wasn't matte, I would not know the difference. I think it's a great leather. I think the consistency is good. I think the thickness is good. It's not too thick. It's not too um, thin. It's very soft. It's very malleable. It feels like it's not going to get scratched up very easily. It's just a different type of leather with the mat and the texture than the Bottega and plus this is woven so I don't even know what a Bottega Veneta bag feels like that's not woven because all of my Bottega actually yes actually all of them all of them are woven so how does it compare I think that it compares pretty well based off of the knowledge that I have all right, guys, I think that was all of your questions. If you have any other questions that I didn't answer or if I missed one of your questions, I'm so very sorry, but please leave them down in the comments below because I'd be happy to answer them for you. I will do an actual review. Once I've had this bag for six months to a year, I tried to wait for the reviews for at least most of the time a year before I do a dedicated review. I feel like having a bag for just a couple months is the perfect time for first impressions. It's enough time to give you guys um, any annoying features or any good features, but it's not good enough to, t to share with you guys actual wear and tear on the bag. If you guys have any other bags that you have questions about and you'd love for me to do a poll again or a questionnaire again to ask you guys what questions you have and answer it, basically do this style video for any of my other bags, please let me know down in the comments below. I'd be happy to do that for you guys. I feel like this type of video or this type of first impression might be a little bit more informative than me just going off of what my questions might be. So again, leave any bags that you want a first impression or questions about in the comments below and I'd be happy to film that for you guys in a future video.